I've already explained to you what the rules of the classroom are. Right, you're obviously not following them as I've asked you to do, so I've given you a warning. Right, now the next step will be consequence for your actions. That's your choice. You go, Charles, if you can come to the front. Just sit down here for a second, please. And off you go, there, guys. Well done there, Rosa. That's some good work today. OK, then, Charles. I've asked you to stay behind at the end of the lesson because during the lesson you was taken away, OK? It wasn't me. It wasn't you. OK, well, what I do want you to do, what I do want uh, of you is to be aware of um, expectations in my classroom. Um, I can't have you or other students in the classroom trying to learn if people are being distracted, OK? So if you're aware of that, then I don't think there's going to be an issue around you and drumming, OK? Thank you very much, yeah. Off you go, everybody. Hello. Let's take a closer look at these scenes. In the first clip, we saw the teacher issue a warning, then deal with the situation by taking the student aside in the classroom. He decided that the issue didn't warrant a meeting later. In the second clip, the teacher decided that a meeting later was necessary. He could have chosen to ignore the drumming on the desk, as it was the first time it had happened. But soon afterwards, for training purposes, we surmise that Charles had to be warned and told to see the teacher after class. He needed a simple, brief reminder meeting, during which some key points and messages could be asserted. The purpose of the brief reminder meeting is essentially to nip the problem in the bud, make it absolutely clear that the behaviour is unacceptable and why, and encourage a more positive way forward. The video helps us to apply some of the ideas discussed in the patterns and the three-step process episodes. The teacher's quick analysis tells him Charles has broken a rule once too often and has displayed a pattern of minor attention seeking. So what does the three-step analysis reveal? Let's look at the behaviour itself, how the teacher reacted and how the student responded to the teacher. What did the student do in the second clip? Well, Charles was off task and began to drum on the table, distracting the teacher and others. The trigger may have been the simple fact that the teacher was giving attention to another student at the time. He may have just wanted to avoid doing the work. Although the teacher's stare worked and Charles got back on task pretty much straight away, it happened again a few minutes later. How did the teacher react? He calmly made his disapproval clear, and emotionally and without any words or provocation. He also remained calm and matter-of-fact the second time, whilst arranging to meet Charles after class. He also avoided engaging in any discussion. How did the student react at the time? Very well, both times. Charles, though, didn't look entirely happy with the outcome. So to make the meeting worthwhile, the teacher needed to be sure that the messages were clearly understood and that the incident, though minor, didn't end on a negative note. Did you notice what happened during the meeting? The teacher stated what happened and the student denied it was him. But instead of provoking an argument, the teacher stayed focused on the desired behaviour explained why, and then ended on a positive way forward for both. For homework, think back to a minor behaviour encounter or meeting you've experienced or witnessed with a student. How did the conversation go? Was it similar or substantially different to the one in this video? Would you have said or done anything differently? That was a simple, relatively straightforward everyday meeting to help us to begin to apply some tactical skills. The next example demands a bit more and is entitled Meeting the Persistent Attention Seeker. Please feel free to contact us if you need help with any topic or of any feedback. See you soon.